Hello and welcome to my new video, in which Charlotte's AI voice guides you through my flux model discovery journey. And truly, there are lots of new and cool things to do with flux. The one really unique feature of the model is that it is excellent at processing real photographs. Together with the new tools, this ability opens up the essentially new, but somehow long desired, creative possibility of allowing photographic reality to meet an AI-supported imagination. The recently released Flux Redux style adapter model seems to have been made for this. While reviewing the example workflows from Fluxtapos for research, I had an idea. If the Redux Advanced node essentially tokenizes input images and uses these tokens as additional conditions in the prompt, enabling regional control of prompts via the new nodes, surely this could also work with the Redux style model. The first approach that came to mind was masking regions using a mask from RGB node. But first, we need all the basic nodes for the workflow. This includes besides the load diffusion model node, a dual clip loader where we can set up the appropriate clip models and select the flux dev model. To speed up the generation process, we should use the FP8E5M2 weight D type. Following the model pipeline, the next nodes are Apply Flux PH Attention and Model Sampling Flux, both of which generally enhance the output quality. The latter, in particular, allows you to influence how much the model deviates from the prompt input. In a way, this determines how much contextual gap filling the model does. That's the basics, at least. Next, we have the Power LoRa Loader node, where we can select the Flux Turbo LoRa. Without this, the wait times would be unbearable. The strength should remain at 1.0. The clip outputs are connected to the clip text in Code Flux node. The subsequent nodes include Sampler Select, Basic Guider, Basic Scheduler, Sampler Custom Advanced, and of course, Random Noise, Load VAE, and VAE Decode. For the basic setup, we also need an empty latent image node whose width and height we convert to inputs to connect to the Easy Resolution Picker node. We can then link its outputs directly to the Model Sampling Flux node. The advantage of the Resolution node is that it allows us to set the 2 megapixel limit, which is the maximum resolution Flux can handle. At this stage, we leave the model pipeline to bring in the Redux style model nodes. For this, we need the Redux advanced node, connecting its conditioning output to the corresponding input of the Create Flux Regional Cond node. Next, we connect the Redux style model, Clip Vision, and the red and green outputs of the color mask to their respective mask inputs and attach our input image. To ensure everything is set up correctly, we can add a mask preview. Using the regional cond output from the Create Flux regional con node, we link the first region to the second.
and connect the whole setup to the Apply Flux Regional Cons node. From here, we follow the model pipeline back to the basic guider. But before we complete the workflow, let's take a closer look at the Redux nodes and their functions. This is especially worthwhile because it helps us understand the unique architecture of the Flux model. At the core is the Redux Advanced node, together with the specialized Clip Vision model and, of course, the Redux Style Adapter model. The input image is first resized to a manageable scale and then divided into smaller image patches. Here, the downsampling factor, which we configure in the Redux Advanced node, plays a crucial role. For instance, with a downsampling factor of 1, the entire image is divided into a grid of 27x27, resulting in 729 patches. In our example, using a factor of 3 reduces the grid to 9x9, or 81 patches. As you can see, each patch represents a specific area of the input image. These patches are then processed by the Clip Vision model, which is trained to extract visual and semantic information from the patches, convert them into tokens, and pass them to the Redux Style Adapter model. The latter sends the tokens to the T5 text model, turning the visual data from the input image into textual information that enhances the prompt. This means that with a factor of 1, an additional 729 tokens are added to the prompt. In the clip text, in Coda node, we can write a prompt that is limited to 512 tokens, provided we want clip to use it as a single piece. A factor of 1 essentially overrides our prompt. This combination of strengths across different models coupled with the fact that Flux appears to have been trained on real photographs rather than on generated images, artworks or other stylized content, enables the model to handle realistic visual data exceptionally well. And I think that's fantastic. Back to the workflow. Once everything is properly connected, all that's left is to upload the color mask via the image loader allowing for fine-tuning between the two Redux adapters. After a few iterations, we get some really cool results. Of course, we can also use other masking methods, for example, via the Create Shape Mask node, or this alternative technique. To put it mildly, I'm absolutely thrilled with Flux. It's just so much fun to test out my ideas with it, especially since the model's architecture aligns so well with my creative visions. I particularly enjoy the interplay between reality and imagination. In South American literature, this concept is often described as magical realism, which feels quite fitting here. There is, however, one drawback. The model is very resource intensive. The 12 GB of VRAM on my RTX 3060 graphics card are almost always maxed out and 32 GB of RAM seems to be just enough. But there's so much more to explore and experiment with in Flux and the other new tools, so you can expect more videos on this topic. If you want, you can download the workflow from my website, alienate.de. Simply scroll down to the gallery and drag one of the images into the Comfy UI user interface and off you go at least if you don't have to download all the models, but I think that's worth it, despite the oversize of the Flux models. As you can see, I have packed both options for regional masking into the workflow. Both have their advantages, but also their disadvantages. Have fun trying them out. But if you want to support the channel and my extended Redux-style adapter workflow, then firstly, I would really appreciate it. Secondly, 
You can do this via Buy Me A Coffee. The link is in the description. And thirdly, in addition to the extended workflow, the zip file also contains all the Flux Dev LoRa's I have trained and used here. Have fun with it and thanks for the support. The additional tools in the workflow are the Florence 2 model because it can often be quite helpful for the regional prompts that I have also integrated into the workflow. It provides a kind of preview of what the AI can recognize in the image and also a short description for the prompt. And the Painter node allows you to create the color mask exactly as you need it. Such a regional application of the style model with an additional prompt and an image gives even more room for creativity. Well, as if that wasn't big enough already. In any case, you can take the idea of using images via the style adapter model as a strong prompt extension to the extreme. But then the fine tuning becomes a time consuming adventure. But as already mentioned, it's just so much fun to play around with the new nodes, and especially the flux model, that the model's weaknesses can be forgiven. The thing with the hands, for example. Forgivable because it can do a few things extremely well and is far better at them than any of the models I have tested so far. So that the VRAM thing doesn't get out of hand with so much image material. It's obviously helpful to use a T5 encoder-only model and a clip model that specializes in long prompts and image processing, like this one. And obviously the unload model node is also very useful. In addition to a few other performance tools, I have also included this in the workflow. As for the really interesting part, the creative part, just a few days ago, and just to test it with Flux, I used the Save Latents and Load Latents nodes. Latents are small instances of the model, that is small representations of the individual generation process. And although they are only 2 megabyte in size, they contain quite a lot of data. And we can obviously still do a lot with them. As you can see here, apart from restoring the image, in Comfy UI there are tools we can use to manipulate the latents in the latent space, sometimes with interesting results. We can flip and rotate them, or move their locations, overlay them, interpolate them, merge them, and more. This crazy eye that you can see was generated by Flux. So as I said, if you want to have the workflow and the LoRa's and the latents shown, and also support the channel, the link is in the description. That's all for today's video. If you found it interesting or helpful, I'd greatly appreciate a like and a subscribe. And don't forget, have a great day.